You're listening to Storage Nerds Podcast, where we unravel the best kept secret of the real estate investing world, the storage industry. Join the grassroots guru in self-storage, Stacy Rossetti, in insightful discussions about finding, funding, and running these spaces, allowing you to yield the highest returns possible. Get your foot in the door on self-storage and discover how to properly purchase facilities, negotiate with sellers, and close the deal without worries. Start unpacking that investment wisdom with Stacy right now. All right, welcome everybody. I'm gonna just uh, leave the leave the background the way it is this time until I figure it out. My computer died on me, and then my husband did like a, a factory reset, and then everything is gone. So I'm like trying to figure it all out again. Also, another thing is that I'm in a very I'm I'm in actually a really nice place, but it's a very bad internet connection. So hopefully, I'm not too spotty for you guys. Um, I, you know, I can't control it. It's got like a super high, like upload speed. And then it's like, the, I'm sorry, the download speed, but the upload speed is like really, really crappy. So I'm not sure how it's going to go today, but it is what it is. So hopefully I'm not breaking up too much for you guys. I wanted to uh, first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Stacey Rossetti and um, I teach people how to invest in self-storage. I've been teaching people how to invest in self-storage now for a couple of years. I've been personally investing in self-storage for about five years. So I'm a newbie, just like everybody else, you know, here, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's got to get started somewhere. So I've been doing this for about five years. Uh, before I invested in self-storage, I invested in resident on the residential side. And I did rehabbing. I did a lot of rehabs um, from 2010 to 2015. And in 2015, basically, is when I started getting into self storage investing. Okay. So, um, and so, and then also, I have a, uh, a coaching program that's called Storage Nerds. So, if you're interested in checking that out, that's kind of where I hold your hand. Uh, we just opened the doors in May and we had we had a good handful of people come in and we already have so many people putting offers in. It's like so awesome. Right. And uh, we already have several people that have gotten facilities under contract as well. And they just started a couple of weeks ago. So if you want to actually if you truly want to own a storage facility, then um, I highly recommend that you check out Storage Nerds. This because, you know, you just have somebody telling you what to do. You don't have to really figure it out. You know, and somebody there is to hold your hand. That's really what Storage Nerds is about. Now, if you, uh, the doors open again in, in September for that. So you can go to storagenerds.com and then you can get on the wait list if you're, if you're interested. And then if you're like a DIY person, you're like, no, I just want to do it on my own. Then just get the uh, course. It's called Super Simple Self Storage. And you can go to stacyrosetti.com for that. Another thing is I wanted to say hi to all my REI USA peeps that are here right? And that are all listening. So I own REI USA. REI USA is, um, it's basically an online education platform for real estate investors. And, um, and we teach like all aspects of real estate investing. So if you're hearing me now and you're like, yeah, I really am interested in storage, but I may be interested in like Airbnbs or land or wholesaling or something like that, then I, I highly recommend that you check out REI USA as well too, because I teach, I own it, but I also teach there, but we have like 15 other coaches and they teach on a, on a, you know, on a regular basis as well too. They teach their kind of their niches, right? So we have like Mike who teaches land and we have Rachel who teaches Airbnb. So this kind of stuff. Okay. So I just want to point that out because I I always forget to mention them, but they're here as well, too. And they're listening in as well, too. So thank you to all my REI USA peeps. And then finally, this webinar is every Monday night. Every Monday night, I teach on just something on self-storage. All right. So you can always like, you can just come here for free. So if you're the person that's like, I don't want to spend any money. So on my education, I just want to get whatever I can for free. Then you should be coming here every Monday night because I teach. I've been teaching every Monday night now for the past year, and uh, I'll continue to teach on Mondays. So you can at least get some information this way as well, too. And you can ask any questions, and I'll answer your questions as well. And then this session also becomes a podcast, which is called Storage Nerds. So you can search Storage Nerds, the podcast as well, too, like uh, while you're mowing your lawn or like, you know, um, driving around doing stuff. And you can listen to the podcast as well. And we have a YouTube channel, which is called, um, 
Stacy Rossetti teaches and that's in, um, it, and there's a lot of videos there as well too. Okay. So enough about all that. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about um, the nine reasons why you should invest in self-storage or you should be learning how to invest in self-storage. That's the topic of today. Right. Um, so this is going to be really good, especially for all the newbies and stuff. I've gotten a lot of questions lately about like, you know, um, should I, you know, should I invest in self-storage? Why should I invest in self-storage? Um, you know, what about the market? What's my, what's happening in the market, you know, and, and is going to concern self-storage. So I figured I would talk about all that today. And the topic is the nine reasons why you should invest in self-storage. Right. So my my list is right here on the other page. Yeah. So I'm going to just make sure that I have all this and I just um, I talk about all of them. OK, too. and this on no particular order. Right. It's just, you know, my and actually, you know, it's just my nine reasons why we should invest in self-storage. And it's also I asked my husband, too. So um, for a lot of you that don't know, my husband, his name is Pete and he is our my partner in the, um, the self-storage investing world. In the real estate investing world, we uh, we own 11 storage facilities, and we also have a fund, which is called the Self Storage Fund of Fund of America, and um, and I pitched that right after. If you want to come hang out with me and listen to the pitch, but um, and, but uh, we own 11 storage facilities, and we have one. We have actually two storage facilities under contract right now. One of them is in Florida, and the other one is in the nor north. Is it, sorry, is in Georgia, north of Florida, in Georgia. Georgia, in the northern part of Georgia. And we own all of our facilities from like the north part, the northern part of Georgia, all the way to like the panhandle of Florida. And we're, we're basically from like Gainesville to, to North Carolina. And we're also, we're open to going to Alabama. We're open to South Carolina as well too. But typically we'll probably stay in the Georgia, Florida area is kind of where we'll stay. So if anybody ever has any deals in that area, please let me know because we're always open to looking looking at those as well too. And we own, um, so we have a facility under contract in Florida right now that we're um, we're looking at and then we're in the due diligence phase of. And then we also have another a facility in, uh, under contract in the North um, Georgia area. And um, I will be going over that deal in the pitch uh, uh, right after this. So you can go to stacyrosetti.com slash fund. And then um, you can uh, you can come and listen to the pitch if you want to. The fund is a 506C fund or to, uh, to invest in that fund. But um, anybody can come listen. You might as well just come listen to the pitch too, right? And you can see how I'm pitching and making money, you know? So that's one of the things, that's one of the top uh, reasons that we'll talk about for why you should be investing in self-storage. But for me personally, number one, right? The number one reason why you should be investing in self-storage is because it is the best kept secret in the real estate investing world. All right. So let me share my screen. I'm going to write all these down for y'all too, as well. So number one is um, it's the best kept secret in the real estate investing world, right? So this is like, uh, this is something that I feel is like very, very important. And I love this part of it, right? It's the best kept secret in the real estate investing world. Okay. Number one. Okay. So what this means is that the, the self-storage industry is a very, very small industry. All right. So if you think about this, and I've said this, I've said this many times, but if you think about it, there's only around, I think now there's like 53,000 storage facilities in the country. Okay. And, um, and so if you, if you think about it, it's roughly around a, on average, a thousand storage facilities per state. And, and so, and now obviously in California, Texas, I'm moving my microphone a little bit closer to me so y'all can hear me better, but, um, in California, Texas, and let's say what else, um, California and Texas are like the big states where there's going to be way more storage facilities. There's a couple thousand in each of those states. Okay. But typically, you know, on average, a thousand units per state. And then if you think of Delaware, obviously there's not going to be like a thousand storage facilities there, you know, um, but uh, on average, a thousand units. Okay. A thousand facilities. 
And, um, you know, so, you know, how many, how many of those, oh, how many of those 50,000 storage facilities, which honestly doesn't really seem like that much to me anyways, in the first place and in the realm of like all the people in the country. And then out of those 50,000 units, I mean, this, yeah, there's 50,000 facilities, um, probably about 30% of those are owned by REITs, right? So if you have a thousand, if you have a thousand uh, facilities in one state, and then you take out like 30%, then there's only 700 facilities in the state that are owned by mom and pops, right? So when I say mom and pop, I mean like a regular person like me, right? Not a re, not a hedge fund, you know? So if you think of like CubeSmart and Extra Space and all those, they're all considered REITs and, and, and um, they're all funds and, and this kind of stuff, right? So but only but 70 but 70 percent of all storage facilities are still owned by regular people just like you and me right which is completely opposite of like any other commercial right any other commercial area especially multifamily it's switched it's 70 30 70 percent of all um of all like apartment buildings are all owned by like big funds and things like this right and then only 30 percent are owned by like regular just like mom and pop people so for me personally, I feel like there's just way more opportunity uh, to be able to to be able to talk to owners directly and connect with owners directly and get them to sell to you rather than you know selling to a hedge fund. And the truth of the matter is, mom and pops connect to other like to other people that are just you know the same as them. And we talked, and I know this because like you know we have like ten. Uh, you know, virtual assistants that are calling and talking to owners every day, every day, they call 25 um, owners, right? So we're calling 250 owners a day. And, um, you know, when, you know, when we, when you talk to an owner, um, I mean, we're getting leads, we're getting people that want offers left and right. And they really just want like a regular person to buy their uh, property from them. And they just feel like this. Now, on the on the on the the bigger side when you have like huge facilities that are like massive facilities you know sometimes they want to talk to like bigger companies because because they know that they're worth a lot more money but um we have one of my uh, virtual systems right now that just called a um called up an owner and he wants to sell his uh facility and um it's uh, he wants uh, he wants 16 million dollars for it and this is like huge. I think it's like, I can't remember how big it's like massive, huge storage facility, just massive. And uh, so we're running numbers and he wants to just sell it to like a regular person too as well. And he has also this like massive, huge storage facility. It's worth like anywhere from 13 to $16 million essentially is what it is. But um, so even some of the big people, they really want to just talk to regular people. They don't mean, you know, part of this whole like process and the whole thing, you know, they just don't want to do that. So for me personally, investing in self storage is the biggest is, is the best kept secret in the real estate investing world. And the reason why is because there are so many mom and pops out there, and uh, mom and top mom and pop owners, and they really um, they really do want to work with people like you. So, if you want to get into self storage and invest in self storage, your job is to talk to owners directly right? Going through a realtor, honestly, really kind of just bogs up the whole process. Mm -hmm. So if you talk, if you can talk to an owner directly, it really just makes things so much, um, so much easier. It just does. And you really get a better price. Honestly, a lot of people feel like they have to go to realtors to, uh, to buy property and ask them if you, if they want to sell. Okay. And when I got into real estate investing, you know, over 10 years ago, I had no idea that you could just go directly to an owner and just ask them if they wanted to sell their property. I literally had no idea that you could do this. I thought you always had to go through a realtor. So definitely take, take advantage of that. So anyways, the best kept secret in the real estate investing world is, is self-storage investing. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, honestly, you know, but we're going to go through a lot of these, but it's the best kept secret. And there's not a lot of people out there investing in self-storage. I know it feels like right now, it feels like there's a lot of people trying to get into self-storage, but in the grand scheme of things, most people don't actually purchase something, 
all right? Because it takes a lot of work and effort to go through that process and to find a facility to buy and then like be able to fund it. And I would say a lot of people want to buy storage facilities, but most people don't actually do what it takes in order to purchase one. And that's another reason too. So if you have 50,000, you know, storage facilities in the country and 30 of them, 30% of those are owned by REITs, right? So that's like, what is that? Like 20%? I'm so, I mean, 20,000, sorry, 20,000 storage facilities. So 30,000, whatever. Anyways, around 30,000 storage facilities are owned by mom and pops. And then a lot of those like are owned by, um, a lot of those like are, are owners, like we own a, like 11 storage facilities. So a lot of the own, the mom and pops will own two or three or four or something like this, right? So you just have to take that into consideration too. So let's just say there's 5,000, you know, 5,000 more of those. So there's 25,000 storage facilities that are owned by, you know, that are, that are, that are owned by one person. Like, you know, like there's 25,000 people in the entire country that are investing in self-storage. That's like not a lot, honestly, if you think about it. So just so much less competition than the than all, you know, all the other residential is like way too much competition. Multifamily is way too competent comp, too much competition. Okay. All right. Let me go to my page and look at what my next one is. My next one is so this is one of my favorites as well, too. It's recession resistant why you should be investing in self-storage. It's, it's, it's recession resistance. We all know what's going to happen in the next couple of months. I don't know. Are we in a recession now? Are we not? Are we going to have one later? Most likely, we're definitely going to be in a recession here soon, right? The one thing I love about storage is that in an upturn, you make money, and in a downturn, you make money. It's like if you look at the history of all of the real estate industries combined, self-storage is just the most stable of everything out there. Right. And that actually gives me great comfort, you know, and I'm sure it does, too. And I'm sure this is one of the main reasons why you do want to get into it. But but self-storage investing is, is considered recession resistant. Right. And the truth is, is that uh, even during COVID. Right. Even during COVID, like. So, you know, before COVID, uh, you know, before COVID, you know, we were rocking and rolling and doing great. And then, of course, all of a sudden COVID happened. The good thing is that since we started in the business in the first year that we got into um, real estate, we got into self-storage investing and bought our first facility. We tried to make we tried to make everything as, as electronic and virtual as we possibly can. Right. And um, so, you know, for, for three years, we. Um, we're managing everything from our computer. We rarely ever went to the facilities, you know, and um, and then COVID hit. And, and I'm telling you, a lot of these owners, these mom and pop owners, they really took a hard hit because the truth is, is like, I would say up to COVID, you had to go to the facility and you had to sign the contract. You had to meet, you had to meet your tenant and get the signed contract. I remember we, um, like three years ago, we moved up into the North Georgia mountains. And so we, 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 we got a storage facility kind of right next to our house. We actually went and rented a unit because all of our storage facilities are kind of in, we're in the Atlanta area and then like down South Georgia. And so we rented the storage unit and I'm telling you the guy, he did not have a software and I had to mail him in a check to pay for hit the unit. And, um, it was just like the weird, and he he mailed me the he mailed me the uh, the contract. I signed it and I mailed it back to him, and then I mailed him a check as well too. And every month I had to mail him a check. I just thought that was the weirdest thing because you know we owned we already owned like maybe four or five storage facilities at that time, and like we know, we don't even accept checks, you know. So so COVID before COVID it was it was very much not virtual at all. And then during COVID they created this word that's called contactless. And the storage investing world in, in the storage industry essentially is like everybody, all these mom and pops, and even all the bigger REITs all had to become contactless. Because if you go into like a U-Haul and you want to you want to rent something, they got this long, huge contract that's like you have to sign and electronically sign, and it's just like this whole thing because um you know, they have all this paperwork that you have to do. So um, before COVID, uh, before COVID, everything was a lot different. Now it's contactless. 
But for us personally, we were already contactless. We were already contactless because we had been that way anyways. And so for us, COVID, like nothing changed. Honestly, nothing changed for us at all. And I'm very, very blessed to be able to say that, honestly. But um, like we had a couple of people, we had about a thousand tenants at the time. And we had a couple of people that said that they couldn't afford their $50 a month or $100 a month. And so like my husband came up with like some payment plans and this kind of stuff to help them out. But essentially it was probably a handful of people. I mean, out of a thousand tenants, it was probably like maybe 50 people or something and that's it. And um, and in the end, most people actually paid off. I mean, paid the, their everything off and got back on their feet and stuff. So for us, I mean, losing a couple thousand dollars was really not that big of a deal out of the grand scheme of thing because we had, you know, we had so much money coming in. And, um, and you know, for, for us also, it's just like, it just makes life so much better, you know, when you can just, you can, you can go through something like that that happens and still make the money. We were still making income on all the properties that we had, except for just a handful of people that didn't pay. And uh, so that's why I say I say storage is recession resistant, right? So even if if we endured COVID and we were still making money during COVID, um, so for us, like whatever's going to happen over the next couple of years, whatever happens to the market at all, like we have no fear about it because we know that we have this income coming in on a regular basis, and we know that we're investing in something. That is not going, you know, that is is not going to go away. We're still going to be making money on it. Unlike residential, right? Because residential is really going to be taking a big turn here over the next couple of years. And multifamily, who knows what's going to happen with that as well, too. I hope multi, hope multifamily kind of sticks with the game. And I hope... Um, you know, because we do need property. We need we need affordable property is really what we need. So, but anyways, recession resistant. I love storage investing because it's recession resistant. Okay. All right. And if you guys have any thoughts or anything like that about anything I'm saying, just put it right into the chat so that we can uh, we can discuss it. Um, also, another thing that I love about storage, we talked about this a little bit, but you can work from anywhere, right? So. Um, we live in an RV. So if you don't know, we live in an RV. I'm actually in my RV. This is my bed. You can see it right here. This is my bed. This is my little this is my little office space. I have a little table right here. And this is where I work. All I need to work is my laptop and a little desk. And uh, we travel the country um, all the time. I mean, every week we're in someplace different pretty much. And um, we manage all of our storage facilities from our RV. OK, so um, and like I, I talked about COVID as well, too, during COVID, uh, uh, you know, became the, there, there became this term contactless and contactless is um, is essentially as, essentially like the new thing now. And it's so funny. People are like, you know, doing webinars on like how to become contactless still. And I'm thinking to myself. You know, this is something that we did like several years ago, but the the good thing is that you can have a software, you just you get the software, any software that you want, pretty much now is, that can manage the back office of your facilities. And they're all like just web based. Right. So gone are the days that you need like a desktop. When I got started, it's so funny, like five years ago when I got started, um, I was like doing demos of all the different, there was only like three softwares out when I was doing demos. So literally like all these softwares that have come out for the storage in the storage world or have all come out in the last couple of years. Cause when I got started like three, like five years ago, I did a demo for ESS, which is easy, easy storage solutions. I did a demo for storage. And then I did a demo for SiteLink and SiteLink was more is desk was desktop based. And, um, and then, uh, and, you know, with desktop based with this like kind of web component to it. And ESS was like a brand new software that had just come out on the market. And it was so like DOS looking and very bulky looking. And storage had just come onto the market like maybe a year ago or so. Like it was just starting to be this thing. And so everybody pretty much up until like, 
the mid like 2010 to 2015 was all using uh, Sitelink. Like Sitelink was like the main one. And then there is a U-Haul, there's a U-Haul uh, software that U-Haul uses. And then you can also license to use the U-Haul software as well too. And so some people like you would hear owners back in the day using either Sitelink or U-Haul. Those were the two ones. And then storage came and, and then ESS eventually came as well too. And um, storage uh, was like just very user friendly. It's like the only really user friendly one. So I was like, I'm just doing that one because like it's the most user friendly, you know. And um, so we set up storage, and that's how we started running our uh, our software. It's just right. I mean, our, our facilities is right through that software. And then our the very first year that we bought our storage facility. Our intention was not to be like completely virtual and live in like an RV and travel full time. What happened was that we worked that first year to become truly contactless. And we really worked on creating the systems that we need and having like boots on the ground people that we hired and like having, you know, phone people that would answer the phone for us and really kind of creating a virtual environment for ourselves so that we could have this. And it, 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 good, it took us a good couple of years. So we bought our first facility, I think in 2017. Okay. And um, so it took us a good year. Actually, it took us two years to become completely virtual. And we just, we had decided in the beginning of 2019 which is like a year and you know almost two years into owning a storage facility that we wanted to be able to travel around and manage our facilities at the same time. So it took us a good process to get through, to get to do that. But um, the truth is, is that, you know, you really need a good team of people to manage your facilities. You, you know, we have boots on the ground people. We've got phone support. We've got an operations manager. We've got um, my husband and myself. I don't really do anything. Actually, my husband kind of manages everything. He does all the big stuff. And then Bonnie underneath us is our operations manager. And she really actually managed this as a team. And really what we're doing is training Bonnie to manage the company. And she will be the predecessor. She will be the person that really kind of handles everything. So she's been working with us for five years. And then underneath her, we have our boots on the ground people and our phone support people. And she manages all that herself okay and she just started doing that this year and she's been with us for like five years so it's it's a process to do that but so now we're like completely virtual 100 percent virtual we're traveling around and um and you can manage your storage facilities from anywhere and the truth is is like a lot of people ask me because I talk to even students and storage nerds and they say, I, you know, I really need to have a, you know, like a storage facility, like right near me so I can manage it the first time and really learn how to do it. You know, and a lot of people think that way. Okay. And I want to just like, I want to basically say that the truth is, is that the closer your facility is to you, the more time you're going to be spending at that facility. All right. It's true. I'm telling you, because we had a storage facility. We moved up to the North Georgia mountains and then I was driving along and I, and I found this abandoned storage facility, like in the mountains. And it happened to be like 15, 20 minutes from um, our house. And so we, I went, we went ahead and bought that facility. And then my husband was like, Oh, he's always at this facility. He's like, Oh, I'm going to go run to the facility, you know? And then would just see like, he'd be gone for like hours to go like fiddle fart in the stuff to get the facility. And, um, I told him, I was like, you are not managing this thing virtually. So, and then we started traveling, of course, obviously. Now, all of our other facilities are like, you know, four or five, six hours away from us. So those were all done. But this one that was right around the corner from our house, this one he always spent all his time at. You know, so um, so the truth is, is that when you get out and look for facilities, like what you should really be looking for is like the mark, you know, how good the market is going to be, how much money you're going to be making in this in this deal. You know, what's the appreciation value? Not, oh, I need to have something right next to me, because what's going to happen is if you only look for something within like a 30 minute radius or an, uh, an hour radius of your house, then your the opportunity right of you being able to buy something is just very very minimal okay so there is no there's nothing wrong with buying something that's like two three four five six hours away you know or even in different states like a lot of people are in like a lot of my students are in California and um, they uh, you know they're not buying in California and actually I have a student right now that just got a storage facility under contract in. Um, in uh, North Carolina, and he lives in um, in San Diego. Okay, so 
So the further away that your facility is, the better it's going to be because it's going to become truly passive income because you have to learn how to delegate all that work off to somebody else, right? And then you start you start thinking about that and you start looking for deals that you can actually do that with. So you do not have to have something next to you. You, have, you need to have something as far away as you as you possibly can, right? So then that way it can become passive income, right? And we've learned that just too over the years, okay? And that's the one thing that I, that's why you should be investing in self-storage is because you can make it passive income. You can make it truly hands-off and then you can you can create the lifestyle that you want, right? Okay, number four is, I already just, I just said it. Passive income, passive income, right? So you get to have passive income. There's two different ways, or, or actually, yeah, I would say there's two different, two or three different types of passive income when you, when you think about storage investing. Most people think passive income is just like, you know, very little work, all right? But the truth of the matter is, is that when you buy a facility or any, any business at all, there's going to be work that's involved, right? So it's not, so passive income is not, um, you know, passive income doesn't mean buy a facility and then only work an hour a week or something like this, right? Although after you get it up and running and after you really stabilize it, you know, depending on what type of a facility is, you are you are going to have, you know, passive income. And, and, and passive income is not cash flow, right? Passive income is de- different from cash flow. Okay, so cash flow is like net net, like what you're actually going to be making, what's your cash on cash return, what is, what you're actually going to be making after your, you know, you have your income minus your um, expenses minus your mortgage, you know, becomes your like net net, right? And um, so when you think of passive income, you have to think of like, you have to think of like what type of passive income that you want. Do you want cash flow? Right, cash flow is only one type of passive income. Is is passive income to you? Is passive income to you? Um, you know, a, like just appreciation on the back end, right? So for me personally, passive income is really like the money I'm making, right, by not doing anything, which is really for me appreciation because cash flow, right? Cash flow requires work. Cash flow requires a little bit of work, right? So, you know, for me, it's like when I buy a facility for a million dollars and I know I can sell it for four million dollars, right? After I get, after I raise the rents, all I have to do is just raise the rents. That appreciation, that appreciation to me is like true passive income because essentially all I'm doing is really just stabilizing the property and uh, and then making money on the back end, right? And, um, and you also have to be mindful of what kind of properties that you, uh, that you buy, right? So income producing properties will produce cash flow, right? And you'll make cash, but you still have to manage that facility. So it's real, it's, it's truly not passive income, right? So storage, you know, people always say like, oh, get into storage investing because you think it's passive income. All right. You know, but the truth is, is that when you have to manage a facility, that's not true passive income. Right. So just think about like passive income is means what to you. And for me, possibly it's I love what I love about storage is the appreciation. I love cash flow as well, too. And a lot of people think like, oh, I need to re- I need to replace the income that I make right now. And I say, OK, well, how much money do you make right now? I make one hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, one hundred thousand dollars a year net like to you. That's a lot of storage facilities. All right. That's a lot of doors. All right, because you have to think your cash on cash return could be anywhere typically 10 to 20 percent. Now, every once in a while, you'll find like a smoking hot deal. But uh, typically your cash, your cash on cash return is um, is 10 to 20 percent. Now, the deal that I'm going to go over in the pitch later it has a cash on cash return. It depends on whether or not we pay cash or we leverage it out and go get a loan. And essentially what we're going to do on that deal is we're going to pay cash and buy it immediately and then stabilize it and refi it out. But the cash on cash return for that is 17 um, percent just by paying cash on it. 
right? But once I leverage that money out and refi it out, it's at over a 40% cash on cash return. That's because the appreciation is so high on the back end, right? So cash flow is important. I get that you want to replace your income, okay? But um, you have to think in terms of like cash on cash return. So if you buy a million dollar property that's making $100,000, most and it's only it's netting 10% cash on cash return and essentially you're making $10,000 and you're getting that you know per year so you're going to have to have 10 10,000 10 1 million dollar facilities to make $100,000 okay all right which is basically about 100 units so it's like a thousand and that's like us it's like a thousand uh, doors okay so just think about it that way. It's a 100 units typically on average. This is like on average across the whole country. 100 units is around is, is valued at a million dollars. A million dollars uh, makes around $100,000 a year. And your cash on cash return is 10%, which is about $10,000 a year. I can just give you an idea. But so you can truly make, and uh, people think that you can buy one facility and you're making a hundred thousand dollars so that like that's your income, right? But the truth of the matter is, is that that's like the gross income. That's not the net income. The net income is minus all your expenses and everything, okay? So you have to keep that in mind that you're going to have to build up, you know, your portfolio in order to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and you replace your income, Okay. All right, let's see. Another reason why you should be investing in self-storage is I'll talk about the next two together. These are these are all reasons why I love investing in self-storage too. So I'm going back to my screen here. Yeah. Okay, the another the, the next one is minimal min i you spell minimal? That does not sound right to me at all. That doesn't look right to me. Minimal. Okay. Uh, expenses and number six is low overhead. Okay. And I try to take these from like, you know, I teach find them, fund them, run them. So it's like, you know, I tried to come up with some reasons under finding them, under funding them and running them. This is under the running part. And this is um, minimal expenses and low overhead, right? So the truth of the matter is, is it doesn't really cost a lot, a lot of money to run a storage facility. That's a smaller facility. Now, when you get into huge, big facilities, like this guy wants to sell us his $16 million facility. I mean, there's overhead in this, right? There's a lot of overhead, okay? But uh, but in these little tiny facilities, 100 units, you know, all these newbie facilities that we all want to buy, those are essentially... Um, those are, this is perfect for this, right? And it's true. It does not cost a lot of money to run facilities. Like for us personally, we have, um, and I've been over this on the deal analyzer many times, but it's like your property taxes, your utilities, your, um, your insurance, right? And then you have your, like any type of maintenance expenses, your software, um, and your, um, maybe and I said any, like maybe bug spray, if you want to do this, you know, something like very, like, that's it really not a lot of, not a lot of expenses when you, you, when you own a storage facility, right. And also low overhead means like, you know, a smaller facility that you buy, that's a hundred units or so it's not going to, it's, you know, you can manage this yourself very, very easily. You don't get a lot of phone calls. You really don't, it really doesn't take a lot, a lot of work to manage these things. Okay. And now if you buy a mismanaged facility, obviously you have to clean it up. The first couple of months are a lot of work, but then after you really start just managing it, it doesn't take a lot of, a lot of time. Um, and then the overhead includes the boots on the ground person that you delegate out to manage the, the facility on the ground. And then you're maybe either answering the phone, your phone person, or once you get bigger than like your, you know, your manager, right? your, your office manager. And, uh, and that's really it. I mean, like I said, we own a thousand doors and we have my husband and then we have, you know, Bonnie and Steph. DJ and um, like five people. That's it to manage a thousand doors. So that's what I'm talking about low overhead and minimal expenses. Okay. Now you still want to run your uh, numbers for expenses at 35%, 30 to 
All right. But typically, you know, once you get it up, managed and running, stabilized and running properly, your expenses should be um, pretty low. Now, you know, for, you never, ever want to go off of what the owner tells you their, their expenses are. You have to figure out what your expenses are and run numbers on that. So you can't go off of their expenses just to, just to keep that in mind. Okay. So those are my two favorite parts about investing in self-storage on the management side. Okay. On the funding t- on the funding side, number seven is raising capital or getting loans, getting financing. Okay. So yeah. So everybody wants to invest in self-storage. We all know this. Y'all are here trying to learn how to do it. All right. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is if you really put yourself out there and you really told people, I want to buy a storage facility and I need money to, to do it, you, it's very, very easy to find money to invest in self-storage. Everybody wants to invest in self-storage right now. It's the best kept secret in the real estate investing world. And a lot of people are ultra passive investors, right? They just want to give you their money, right? And they want you to do all the work, right? So I'm going to put that down as well too. Find passive investors. Find investors that are willing to let you do all the work and give you the money and then you guys share in the profits, right? And um, there, I know this for, I know this for a fact because I raise money every single week, And uh, if you put yourself out there and you start asking people for money and telling them that you want to invest in self-storage and that this is what you're doing, then um, then you you really shouldn't have that difficult of a time to find money. Right now, maybe you find somebody that has $50,000, you know, or excuse me, $100,000. And so that's not a lot of money to go out and buy a storage facility, but that's that's a good amount of money for a down payment. So go out and find a um, an income producing property that you can take to the bank and get a loan, and then you guys can join. You guys can form a company, and then you guys can go get a loan together. You can be the boots on the ground person, and this person could be the finance person, and you can work and partner that way as well too. All right, so you got to start thinking outside the box and really educating yourself on on um, creative deal structures, raising capital. Talking to banks, this is why I talk about banks. Banks love storage facilities as well, too. So if you do have money, if you're somebody here listening, say, yeah, I got a couple hundred thousand dollars, start talking to local banks and seeing what they will offer you because banks love storage facilities. Investors, private investors love storage facilities. Passive investors that invest in funds and things like this, they love storage facilities. They want to partner and then banks love it as well too. So the truth is, is that you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you're not asking for asking for it. All you have to do is ask. I tell this to my students all the time. You want to buy a storage facility? Ask, ask, ask an owner if they want to sell. Right. That's all you have to do. You want money to buy a storage facility? Ask people for money. Right. So the big thing is ask. Right. If you're not asking, then you're not going to receive. Right. Okay. The last two. Let's see here. This is a good one. Okay. We all know that the marker, the market is going bonkers. Right. We all know this. We have no idea what's going to happen over the next couple of months, but we know something is going to happen. Right. And I'm telling you, people in the storage investing world, people in the real estate investing world, people in like the multifamily world, they're starting to sweat a little bit, right? Because they have this fear that like, you know, something bad is going to happen. And you get this right before a recession, right before the downturn, you get people that want to sell right? And we are working right now a ridiculous amount of leads from people all over the country that want offers, all right? So number eight is now is a great time to invest in self-storage because now there are so many people that want to sell. So many owners want to sell because the market is, 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 is volatile, okay? So owners want to sell okay so we go back to right asking ask for money ask owners if they want to sell 
Okay. I'm telling you that owners that don't understand, you know, what's going on in the market that truly don't understand. They just know that the shit's about to hit the fan or whatever. Then they feel like they have to back away and get out. And the truth is, and the thing is, is that you hear this all the time. Cash is king. Cash is king. Cash is king. Right. So a lot of owners right now are are preparing for that. So they may say, like, let me sell this so that when the downturn happens, I have that money to go buy a bigger facility or another property or whatever it is I want to buy. I'm doing this as well, too. So there's a lot of people that want to sell. We are we are working on getting our facilities ready so that we can sell them, so that we can have that cash. So when the market drops, we'll be able to go out and buy bigger facilities. So there are there are people right now, there are owners right now that want to sell their storage facilities. And all you have to do is find them and ask. In fact, one of my students program in May when the doors open. So she's been the coaching program for one month, about one month now. And she came to the boot camp and then she went out, she started calling uh, owners and she called, she said she went out, drove for storage, called the owners. She talked to like, she talked to 10 owners and out of 10 of them, three of them wanted offers. So we worked over the last couple of weeks and she put two offers in this past week and she's putting another offer in this week and they're right around the prices that they should be. So I'm going to be, I'm very interested to see what the owners say and um, you know, see what happens, but essentially owners want offers, right? They want offers. So when you talk to an owner, you make sure that you say, can I give just, can I just give you an offer? Like you don't have to take it if you don't want it. Like my, I would like to just give you an offer and see if you're interested and just give you an idea of what I think your property is worth. Okay. So if you're not doing this, you have to start doing this now because now is the time. I'm telling you so many people want to sell right now. Okay. Finally, the last one, my favorite of all of them, one of my favorite of all of them, the first one and the last one is you get to create the lifestyle you want, all right? The storage investing, storage investing world and the way that the way that everything has happened over the last couple of years has made storage, owning a storage facility so easy. We talked about this. Completely virtual, complete, completely contactless. You can literally set up your entire com- company and not have to go to your storage facilities because you can have a boots on the ground person that really manages it, right? And um, and you can create the lifestyle that you want, right? So, you know, you can be, I tell my students, you should be able to be anywhere in the world and run your storage facilities. And, um, and actually, I, I told that to my students a couple of years ago, and that's really one of the main reasons why we did buy the RV and, uh, and, and move into the RV, because I wanted to prove to them that you can be anywhere in the world and run your storage facilities. And you can have the lifestyle that you want and run your storage facilities, right? So I don't know what your type of lifestyle is, what you want to do, you know, but the truth is, is that you can create passive income. You can create wealth. You can um, you can live in an RV and travel if you want. You can delegate. Every, you can buy a facility or build up to a facility where you can delegate everything off and not even really be an integral part of the whole thing, right? You know, and then you can go out and do the thing that you really want because you're getting that income coming in, right? So you've gotten to the point now where you have this passive income coming in. You have this wealth that you built from the appreciation. And now you can go out and create this lifestyle that you want. And it may not happen. It's not like the first one that you buy. You're going to have it like this. It's not for us. I mean, it took us like five facilities in a couple of years to get to that point, right? But the truth is, is that if you if you stick with it, if you educate yourself, and um, and if you really set the systems up so that you can do it, you can really have the lifestyle that you want. And that's really the main reason why I love investing in self-storage. So... Those are my nine reasons why you should be investing in self-storage right now. And uh, then um, just kind of close it out now. If anybody has any final questions, they can ask. They can ask. But uh, I'm going to hop on to my pitch uh, now, which is at stacyrosetti.com slash fund. And I'm going to go over 
my self storage fund of America. I'm going to go over the deal that we have under contract that we're trying we're trying to raise money for, and um, I hope to meet you guys there. Um, other than that, thank you for hanging out, and um, I will see you guys at the next session. Okay, take care. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Storage Nerds. Hope this informative conversation inspired you to go out there and jump into this highly profitable business venture that people rarely talk about. Get more tips on storage space investing at www.stacyrosetti.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a rating. Together, let's build that thriving passive income one storage space at a time. Until next time.